This is an interjection in the nature of revolutions. We say that nano is revolutionary. What is revolutionary? That turns out to be a pretty interesting question, and one which people who are interested in the philosophy of science spend a lot of time futzing with. One way of thinking about this is to ask about some you know, things that we would agree are revolutionary. The wheel is revolutionary, fire, bronze, whatever. And then at present, uh, in terms of technology, cell phones and radar and nuclear weapons, those have all been revolutionary in one or another fashion. The World Wide Web, and in the future, uh, intelligent machines and highly sentient animals. Do you, would you like to have a pet that is significantly brighter than you are? Uh, would a pet that is significantly brighter than you are like to have you? Which is another more interesting question. But these are the kinds of things that technology raises. So where does nano fit in that? Well, here is an example of something that happened. This object replaced that object. And this object and that, the, the chip plus the fiber, replaced, for better or worse, the letter. Although my wife points out to me that the fact that all email messages are essentially public, in her opinion, is going to bring back the love letter because it's the only thing that you can do. A piece of paper is the only thing that you can write on that actually has some privacy associated with it. And here's the cell made up of objects of that sort, which are molecules. So which is it going to be? Is this going to be a, is this going to be a really big deal comparable to that, or is it a little deal? We don't know the answer to that yet. There are, in the theory of revolutions, two kinds of revolutions. There's a revolution which is triggered by the invention of new tools. So the invention of the atomic force microscope, the scanning probe microscope, was a revolutionary tool because it enabled us for the first time to see individual atoms and molecules. Done. That's happened. So we have a revolutionary tool here. Inexplicable observations. There is a theory of revolution that says that science, science accepts revolutions when it, only when it has to. And so the question is, are we in a situation with nano where we're forced to, and in, there are a number of parts of this, understanding how the cell works and understanding quantum phenomena and things of that kind, our back's up against the wall right now. We can't really understand what's going on. So I'm actually optimistic that for all of our torpor, this area is going to force us to rethink some things.